Guys, welcome back. Today is the day. We've been talking about this for almost a year and a half now. Ever since we did the PSA torture test, you guys have wanted to see a Daniel Defense torture test. So here we go. Since the last time you guys complained about me not using any oil before we started the torture test, let's go ahead and add a little bit of oil. Now that we have some oil, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of oil. All right, now that we're ready to start, and we'll add a little bit of oil. We don't wanna forget, while we're racking our charging handle, to add a little bit of oil. Now that our gun is properly lubed, let's add a little bit of oil. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> it's so full of oil. I think it's properly covered. <laughs> For real this time, now that it's oiled. Just to make sure it works before we start everything. Okay. Clear. Let's begin. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the PSA. We're going to drop it on all the sides in the dirt, and then we're going to go to the lava rocks. We're going to drop it on all the sides in the lava rock. Okay. Nasty, dude. Look at that. Uh-oh. <laughs> the death of most of these is uh, just dirty chambers. So, let's... Uh, Get some rounds on this thing. See what happens. It's seated. Hey, it worked. That's a weird one though. That charging handle like doesn't want to let go. We had a little bit of a fire since last time. Same lava rocks as the Bear Creek, same lava rocks as the PSA. Rip down. Oh, we lost our plug. Oh, it's over there. All right, rail down. Uh-oh. There goes our charging handle. Oh, there's the piece. That's gone. And this side. Guys, and I want to say, I purchased this with my own money. Daniel Defense did not send it to me. They did not sponsor this. This was purchased with my own personal money. Uh, so dropping on the lava rocks hurts just a little bit, but let's look at the damage. A Little bit of marks here. Ford Assist still works. Some marks on the brass deflector. A few scuffs on the rail. Rail still looks straight. Some scuffs there. Charging handle obviously seen better days. Buffer tube's got some scuffs. Safety still works. Good thing it's an Ambi charging handle. All right. Put our grip plug back in. 
shoot this thing. Oh yeah, there's no charging handle here. Okay. Still works. Oh yeah. And lock back. That is disgusting in there. All right, so far so good. On to the next. So just like we did with the PSA and the Bear Creek, we're gonna dig a hole in this sandy stuff. We're gonna put the rifle in it. We're gonna take our water, cover it in it, slosh it all around, and then we'll pull it out and see if it functions. This, this ground that we have here is like a, uh, it's like a dust mixed with really coarse sand. This is usually uh, what gives us a lot of stoppages. So let's get to it. The butt pad on that makes great, great easy work for digging in this hard soil. This is for everybody that wants to see mud in a torture test. This is the best we got. <clears throat> this is a torture test of my damn clothes, if anything. All right, make sure that our uh, barrel is clear and we'll shoot this thing. Where's the tree? That cleaned it out. All right, let's go get a mag. All right, we've checked for barrel obstructions. We're all good there, so let's, uh... oh, nope. Look at that. See if the forward assist will get us there. Nope. This is what happens, guys. You get stuff in your chamber and uh, you can't see it around. This is what happens with the Bear Creek and the PSA. I think that's seated. All right, see what happens. Slow bolt. Uh-oh, <laughs> there we go. Ah, ah, <sighs> yikes. That, that, uh, that sand is in everything, man. It's in the mag. It's in the bolt. Nope, slow bolt. One more. So close. We might have to put a little water in this. That charging handle sucks. All right, we're just gonna give it a little bit of water down in the chamber. Dude, this freaking charging handle sucks. What's happening is I'm pulling this lever. It's not releasing this guy. So it's just getting stuck. I might have to freaking break that off in order to try to continue this. We'll be right back. Now that this is up out of the way, everything moves freely. Just to make sure it isn't a mag issue and it is actually a sand issue, we use a clean P mag. Oh, yeah, dude. That one didn't even seat all the way. Oh, it fed and uh, the bolt didn't lock into the locking lug. So, also, this mag button. Seems to be sticking pretty hard. Interesting issue 
we didn't see that on the uh, the palmetto lower. Well, we're just gonna have to do more water. That's all there is to it. There's too much sand in it. It won't clean itself out. Most of the time, you see this type of stuff with tight tolerance firearms. There's nowhere for the grit to go. There's nowhere for the sand to go. Um, sand is so hard on firearms. The wind blows it in there, gets in everything. That's what they make dust covers for. I just don't use them. Dude, what is going on? We have doused this thing in water. I know there's no freaking sand left. This is, this is dismal. Both the PSA and the Bear Creek ran after that. And when we were having intermittent issues, I splashed a little bit of water in there and they ran perfectly fine after that. I'm gonna have to open this thing up completely. I'm gonna have to take the buffer out. I'm gonna have to take the BCG out. This, uh, this sucks. Okay, so everything's taken apart. I had to punch these pens out with a hammer and a punch. Uh, the sand has just made its way into everything. The lower looks fine. Trigger still functions. Safety still functions. The buffer tube was incredibly dirty, but everything still moved. Charging handle is uh, completely covered in crap. Uh, and our BCG, go ahead and bring it in. Our BCG is coated in sand top, bottom, inside and out. Um, but this is also what the other ones looked like as well. I mean, this is pretty, pretty standard stuff. I don't know if you can see down in there, but. We'll go ahead, we'll give this a rinse. We'll give the BCG a rinse, put it back together. I feel like this is a little bit of an unfair advantage, but um, that's all right. We wanna finish this test out, so. Other than being a little dirty, having a little bit of grime in here, there's no reason this shouldn't work. Dude, what the hell? It's completely washed out. Jam. Last one is a slow bolt. we go all right let's pop this one back in there see if we can finish off this mag all right other than the charging handle wanting to come back and hit me in the face you just have to thoroughly clean it okay all right just like the others we're gonna run this thing over Oh my God, that is disgusting. Look at that. I can't tell if that's my tire or some of this tire tread. Look at that butt pad. Hey, the Ford Assist is still on there. That's surprising. There's more rubber. I think that came off of here. All right, we're gonna take this. There's a little bit of a uh, trench right here. We're gonna put this just like that.
just for good measure. You know, in case it's bent or something. We'll straighten it back out. All right, dude, there is no freaking way. There is no freaking way this is gonna cycle. Um, Cause it's just so full of dirt. We're gonna have to go fucking, I don't know, maybe bang some dirt out of this thing on a tree or something. One thing to note, the handguard is now loose. Hey, that kind of helped get some of the dirt out. It's like a dirt maraca. <laughs> The bolt still moves. I guess if the bolt moves, let's see if it shoots. Uh-oh. Nope, there's too much dirt in that chamber. By the way, hey, it went in. That's what she said. Slow bolt. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <sighs> Dudes, my guys, I can't get the mag out. I can't mortar it. Oh, there we go, we got some movement. <sighs> yeah, we need to clean some dirt out. Let's go find our, uh, Go find our Bear Creek tree. Treat this thing real nice. Let's get some of that dirt out. That's firewood right there. How dare you? Nice. Whoa! Well, after successfully making firewood, we now have a nice ergonomic wave in the handguard, just like we did with the Bear Creek. I think they should come like that. Let's go see if that fixed it. Something I do want to mention is this handguard, even though it's got a big bow in it now, it did hold up better than the Bear Creek handguard. The gas tube underneath here is bent, obviously, because there's a big bow in this. Uh, but the one on the Bear Creek, it was like really, really, really bent to the point where it actually changed how the rifle shot. It pinched the gas tube a little bit and made the rifle shoot uh, smoother. This did perform better, but I would expect it to. These rails are not cheap. Obviously, nobody's gonna be doing that with it, but this is an extreme torture test, so that's what we do. Man, this is really annoying. This thing has to be like perfectly clean. I mean, maybe a little carbon fouling, but like, The dirt, the dirt that's in this, even though I've washed it out twice, is really not letting this thing cycle properly. I mean, unless we, we didn't puncture the gas tube, so it's just gotta be the dirt. All right, I guess we'll take it apart again. It's been thoroughly washed, taken apart. There's no reason it shouldn't cycle. Dude, what is going on? Guys, I, I'm at a loss here. Both the PSA and the Bear Creek 
PSA was a $400 rifle. And the Bear Creek I just did because it was on sale for like 200 bucks. It was just an upper, uh, put it on a PSA lower. They both made it past this point. I mean, we haven't even got to the drag test yet. That's like one of the best parts with this. And it's become a, it's become a bolt action. I, I don't know, I don't know what the deal is. Um, try a different mag. Jam. Maybe it was the mag. Maybe it finally uh, jettisoned all that crap out of there. I don't know. I mean, I guess it worked, so well, I guess we'll do the drag test. All right, guys, same as the other ones. Dust cover open, tied to the car. Let's go for a little drive. Dude, oh my God. I mean, this looks pretty similar to the Bear Creek. <laughs> Shiny aluminum. Oh no, oh no, our charging handle. Oh my God, bro. That forward assist is freaking gone. Dust cover's still there. I mean, it's not gonna work anymore, but it's still there. Brass deflectors have seen better days. Wow. That's a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's, oh, the grip. The grip is like completely sanded down. Man. Okay, well, this buttstock is kind of done. Man, what else is there to say? This is uh, impressive. This is the worst, this is the most damage we've ever seen. Uh, oh, we almost lost the screw. Still in there. I'm gonna see what we can do <laughs> to be able to charge this thing, being as the charging handle's completely, uh, completely tatered. Does the stock still move? Kind of. We'll check back in in a couple minutes when we got this thing um, semi-operational and uh, see if it shoots. A few moments later. All right, so let's look at this thing real quick. We washed it off so we can get a better look at it put some water inside to hopefully get things moving around. Uh, that forward assist is 
completely in up. Uh, actually, the interior parts, the, the, the forward assist pole that indexes on the bolt, um, the BCG, is actually sitting over there. It's, it's, it broke off. The pin inside broke off. The parts were just laying inside. Um, which we've seen before, but usually in a little bit different circumstance. Uh, this side is, has a nice machined finish on it, along with the magwell. The safety still works. It's a little gritty, gets stuck sometimes. Um, the trigger still works. I've got this Allen key to stick in here. That is now my new, uh, charging handle. So... We will see if it fires. I have a feeling I might need a little oil. Let's add a little bit of oil. Uh, a little oil uh, for it to function, but you never know. Rough. Hey, it went in. All right. And we tested this mag after that PMAG worked, and this mag ran. Yeah, all right. Let's put some oil on this thing. Let's rack it a few times, see what happens. Maybe it'll run like a champ after that. I can't believe it still shoots. This thing looks terrible. Let's see if we can get any down there towards the buffer. No jokes, all right? These are sick. Oh, I forgot my charging handle over there. Ah! It's a good sign I can pull it back now. It worked! I just needed more oil. Wow. Okay. It freaking worked. Let's uh, let's go run some more rounds through this thing. All right, we got some mags here. <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, run them through this thing and see if it's running reliably now. Right in the dirt. Come on. Oh, that was a slow bolt. Getting hot. Trigger for getting tired. It's a heavy ass trigger. Grass is starting to like barely fall out of this thing. One more. Okay. I'm gonna save the last two mags. Woo. That thing is, uh, Smoking. Gas block is still pinned. Gas tube is still pinned. Gas tube is glowing. Walk back. All right, so what is to be said for this thing after today? Uh, it, I mean, it runs. It had some issues um, with all the dirt. 
all the contaminants, the sand. I don't know if that's due to tight tolerances. I don't know if that's due to gassing, but we went through a considerable amount of ammunition today. Um, and at the end of the day, once it was oiled and once uh, some of that sand was cleared out, it did run. There's been other rifles that didn't need all that extra process to run, but maybe they're looser fitting. Maybe they don't have as tight of tolerances. I'm not sure. I would have to physically measure both rifles. But so far, even though it's ugly, things are rattling, uh, it works. So that means that there's one thing left. We are going to be taking this to the same 400 foot cliff that we threw the PSA off of. And we are going to throw this thing off of that thing too. Guys, welcome back. You wanted it, so we're here. We are back at the cliff edge that we threw the PSA off of. Look at this. all 400 feet plus of cliff. And we are gonna be throwing this guy off, just like you guys wanted. You guys talked about it when I did the PSA. You said, do a Daniel Fence. So we are here and we are gonna do it. Let's get to it. Throwing in one, two, three, go. He's flying! takes about an hour to get around from the top of that cliff all the way down to the bottom. It takes about 20 minutes to hike from the car out to the cliff and then it takes about another 20 minutes uh, to go from there back down into town and then you have to go from town down into the canyon uh, another 20 minutes to get to the spot. So we are almost there. I can see it it's actually right up here so we weren't quite where I thought we were it's a little bit further down the canyon but we are 
we are right here. Here we are, the base of the cliff. We got about 150 yards to walk up to get to the base, so let's get trucking. Holy fuck. All right, guys, finally made it up here. Looks like We've got the buffer. Still looks pretty good in the spring. And it looks like a rifle is right there. Oh yeah, and our stock with our buffer tube. Oh wow, that's way bigger dent than before. Bring it down. See what still works. Safety still works. Um, looks like our bolt still moves in and out. The uh, receiver's got a pretty heavy gap right here. I don't know if you can catch that on the camera. I don't know if that was there before. Uh, that could be definitely an issue. Maybe if I took a dead blow and whacked it back, maybe it would straighten out but um, yeah I don't know doesn't look quite as bent as the PSA I think the barrel is a little bent though but grips a little bit more broken than before trigger still works I don't know if we'll be able to get a mag in that looks a little bent um, but Buffer, spring, still good. Buffer and stock, not so much. Well, we'll take it back. We'll diagnose it. We'll see uh, what's in spec, what's out of spec, and um, see if we can put some parts on it and make a shoot. So, see you a little bit later. Okay, we're back at our workbench. This thing has seen some better days. It is... Uh, it is a little rough, but um, you know I think with some refreshed parts, there's a potential it could run. But let's go ahead and diagnose this thing. Let's get into it. Let's see what uh, is broken. Let's see what is still good, and um, let's check it out. Okay, so right off the bat, we already know most of this was done before it went off the cliff. Uh, so what has happened since? It went off the cliff. Obviously, our buffer tube and our stock is no longer with us. It, um, it has become completely unattached. But, on a good note, the buffer itself is in immaculate shape, and so is the spring. I mean, this looks fantastic. It's completely usable again. The lower, the lower looks fine. There's some... Um, Scratches here from where it must have hit uh, a rock. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of a bend uh, right here at the back of the receiver where it meets the upper. Um, probably the buffer tube probably hit uh, like this. Uh, not exactly flat or maybe it hit like this. 
um, and cause that receiver to bend down just a little bit. So uh, we will take the upper off of the lower, we'll inspect them individually, and I've brought a set of gauges here so we can check the head space. After about 1200 rounds of this thing, we can check and see if the head space is still good on this. Um, we can't really check if the barrel's bent without taking the hand guard off, and I don't want to do that, and I will go over that uh, in a little bit why I don't want to do that. So, lower first. The pens still work. Um, they actually work exactly the same as they did before. There's no difference there. Safety is still the same. It still engages. Trigger still works and resets. The trigger pins are walking out. Uh, at least the actually the hammer pin itself. It looks like the, the trigger pin is fine. But the hammer pin is, has walked out. You know, and that's probably from the impact of when it landed. I don't remember seeing that before. So that's totally to be expected. Uh, it doesn't look broken. Matter of fact, yeah, it just goes right back in. Uh, so we're all good there. The mag button still works. Looks the same. Let's see if it'll take a mag. Now we were curious about this because this, all this, you know, damage on this side. So still takes a mag. Doesn't quite drop it free without the upper on it. Um, it's probably, it's probably a little bent. Um, actually, I think I can see just a, the tiniest about a bow in there, but it does, it's not sticky. It, it, it goes in and out of the lower pretty easily. The lower is still incredibly dirty from everything we did last time. So, you know, actually all in all, that's not, that's not terrible. Uh, I was expecting to not even be able to get a mag in or out of this, to be completely honest. Uh, looks like our bolt catch still functions. It's not broken. To get this lower back in service, to get it back usable, uh, we need a new grip. You know, possibly if there's a way to bend this back up a little bit, probably bending that back up. Uh, I don't know if the buffer will actually cycle through there or not. All in all, not terrible for going off a 400 foot cliff. Let's look at the upper. Nothing on the upper immediately looks worse than it did before. I mean, it might be slightly more bent. The barrel actually looks relatively good. The gas blocks no more bent than it was before. I think it's perfectly fine. The upper receiver on the outside looks fine. BCG looks fine. It's just worn. The bolt looks fine. Just worn. I mean, either way, you're going to replace this. We'd replace it if we were going to make this thing cycle again. Uh, so that's really not that big of a deal. Now, what I do see is there is a hairline crack right here on the outside of this lug on the upper receiver. So that is kind of interesting that with it landing on its side, it would bend, I mean, I guess it makes sense if the grip is on this side and it lands, it may put torque on that. It doesn't look like the front lug is cracked at all. Just the back one, which is really interesting. i get this in camera here on the GoPro. There is a crack all along that lug. Very interesting. So that receiver obviously you could probably shoot it, but you really wouldn't want to. That's kind of a kind of a big safety concern, so you'd want to replace that upper receiver. I think though, I think the barrel is probably still good even though the receiver is cracked. So what we'll do is we will take our headspace gauges and we will check headspace with the bolt. And then we're gonna take, we have another set of headspace gauges that don't use the bolt, it just checks the headspace to the extension itself. So we will do both. I have a no-go and a go gauge. Uh, they're from Pacific Tool, the machine, I believe. Pacific Tool Gauge, sorry. All right, we'll take our no-go gauge first. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the go gauge. This should work perfectly fine. All right, we got the bolt taken apart so we can check the headspace. Uh, but before we do that, actually, I had an idea. 
let's go ahead let's look over the components within the BCG itself and let's take a look at the BCG and just see what it looks like after you know all those rounds with dust and dirt and everything we did to it uh, this BCG actually looks pretty good I mean it's worn the inside looks good there's definitely wear on it but we did shoot it with a lot of sand so that's to be expected uh, the bolt itself looks good the rings look good there's no missing rings or pieces the bolt face looks good uh, yeah so far so far looks great the firing pin Firing pin looks great. It's not bent. It's not missing any pieces. Everything else here looks good. The cam pin, cam pin shows a little bit of wear. Uh, but it looks fine. Nothing crazy. And our extractor. Our extractor, again, just, just wear and tear. Looks all right, and everything else looks good. Our cotter pin isn't super bent. It's got a little bit of a bow to it, but it's pretty straight. I mean, it's a lot straighter than a lot of other ones I've seen, so those all look great. Now let's do the headspace on here. Our go gauge. All right, got our go gauge in. BCG does it close and it closes looks like we've got very little to no wobble there is a little bit of bolt wobble uh, up and down but that's good and here is our no-go gauge Now this bolt shouldn't close on this. We're good there. Bolt does not close. Okay, our extension check. So here's the go. It goes in and it looks like it rotates. This is kind of hard to do with the barrel in the gun. There we go. Yep, it's in there, it's rotated. So our go is good and our no-go. Okay, it looks like our no-go does not rotate. So our head spacing is still good on this barrel. I would say if this barrel is not bent, if it is uh, still good, in fact, that you could confidently shoot this barrel with that BCG and it would still be within spec. So that's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna put this back together. We'll talk about this a little bit, what's gonna happen with this rifle. We'll talk about the uh, future for this going forward and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this DD after the torture test? I think it's pretty tough. I think, uh, I think it suffers from a lot of the inherent drawbacks of the <clears throat> AR-15 platform itself, but I think it's pretty tough. I think if we put a new buffer tube on this, we could use the original buffer and spring. I think if we beat the back of that receiver with a hammer, a dead blow hammer, not a hard hammer, we could probably straighten that out enough to get uh, the BCG to cycle through there properly. We would have to put a new upper receiver on it. You could shoot it with this hand guard, but I probably would put a new hand guard on it since I got to put a new upper receiver on it anyways. But I know in the PSA video, I did that. We went out, we shot it. We did kind of a, a closing on it after the fact. The only reason we're not gonna do it with this at this time, unless it's another video, is I reached out to Daniel Fence if they wanted to warranty this thing, which I know is an extreme case, and I would highly recommend a lot of you, most of you, do not do this. It's very expensive. Um, it's a terrible return on investment doing this type of stuff, but it's content for you guys and you guys wanted to see it, so we did it. I reached out to them about a warranty and they said that they were going to do a full warranty on this rifle. So they have not seen it yet. I'm not sure if they watched my review yet, 
They may or may not watch this video before I get that back. And they may decide that it is too far gone to do a warranty on it, which I totally understand. And I would never hold that against them. That is 100% understandable. So the plan for this rifle going forward is we are going to put it in a box. We are going to ship it back to Georgia. Those guys are gonna do their thing with it. They're gonna look at it, diagnose it, probably get a couple laughs and then either send it back to me in this condition. And if they do, I have plans for that. Uh, or they're going to do a warranty repair on it. We will get back a fully functional rifle ready to go for more videos. So stay tuned for that. That'll be in a follow-up. Either way, I'm looking forward to what comes. So stick around. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you like this type of content, please get down there in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you thought it was stupid. Let me know if you think I'm stupid. And I will catch you next time. This has been Independence Arms. Thank you for watching.